So I ended up taking my block to the machine shop and it seems like the sleeves have lifted up a tiny bit for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So the sleeves were slightly higher than the block itself just by one or two thousandth of an inch. Uh, and according to the mechanic there, they did take off around three thousandth of an inch off my block. And my head is untouched because it was uh, completely flat. And just to give you a reference, a sheet of uh, printer paper is around four thousandth of an inch. So they took off just a little bit under a uh, thickness of a printer, a printer paper. So I asked around and everyone said that I'll be fine using the OEM head gasket with just 3,000th removed. So I'm lucky that my head was completely flat, otherwise I'll probably need to get a thicker head gasket. Now, we are ready to hone the cylinders. If you don't have the honing tool, you can always pick one up from Harbor Freight. They don't cost that much, they're around like $25. And you'll also need a bottle of cutting fluid. Now I personally, I use uh, brake fluid and it works really well and what you're trying to achieve is a nice cross hatch pattern on the cylinder walls. Now this will help the cylinder walls hold oil in order to lubricate the piston rings. Now what you're trying to achieve is a 45 degree cross hatch pattern and here's a diagram showing what the correct cross hatching pattern would look like. Now before starting to hone, you want to lubricate the cylinder walls with some brake fluid and you want to put some on your honing stone as well to keep it lubricated. This will help cut into the, the cylinder walls cleanly and also carry away the dust as well. Now you don't want to overdo it because you might take off uh, too much material and then you'll have an increase in piston to wall clearance. I just did it enough to scratch off the walls and get a clean finish. And here's the speed that I honed it in real time. Now this is what my cylinders look like, and I think that it looks pretty good to be honest. Um, after you finish uh, honing it, we're getting really really close to reassembly. So after this, it's just a matter of cleanup, uh, checking the bearing clearances, and then we are ready to put everything back together. Now when you hone the cylinders, you have your uh, cylinder dust along with the honing stone dust that's stuck on the cylinder walls. Now you want to make sure you get all the stuff off of the walls otherwise the dust could potentially stick to the oil and then circulate throughout the engine and destroy your bearings. So if it does get into your oil and scratch up your bearings then you'll have a really bad day. Now I started off by hosing the cylinder walls off with just plain water. You can use brake cleaner but um, for me there seems to be a lot of dust so I, I went ahead and used uh, running water to wash away the majority of the dust. Um, after you hose everything down you want to immediately wipe off the water off the cylinders to prevent, um, to prevent it from rusting. And then right after you wipe off the water you want to wipe on some engine oil. Now um, red rags are good for cleaning up oil spills and stuff but uh, when I used a uh, rag soaked in oil and I wiped the cylinder walls, it left behind a ton of lint, which is just really annoying for cleaning up, especially when you're rebuilding a clean engine. Now, um, when you look into your cylinders, you might not see it with your naked eye, but there's actually a lot of dust that's still stuck onto the cylinder walls, and it's really hard to feel with your fingers as well. So the only way to tell if your cylinder walls are clean is to actually wipe it with a clean paper towel or uh, what I like to use, a coffee filter. If it's clean after wiping it, then that means the cylinder wall is clean. Now most likely it won't be, and if you do wipe it, it's going to have a lot of black stuff or uh, brown stuff. And I like using coffee filters mainly because it's cheap. You can get a pack of like a hundred for just a few dollars at your local grocery store, and you could easily see the dirt on it. Plus it leaves no lint behind, so it's perfect for wiping off uh, journals, bearings, and all that stuff. Now I initially poured a little bit of oil on the coffee filter and started wiping away to get uh, rid of a majority of the contaminants. And then I followed through with uh, dry filters to wipe down the cylinder walls until it will come out clean. And it took at least 5 or 6 filters in order to get the cylinder walls to be completely clean. But just remember, all your hard work will pay off in the end. So the next topic is a little more critical, so I'm going to be going into detail. And this is going to cover the piston rings, um, piston ring gap, clocking, uh, bearing clearances, and also the rod orientation along with the piston orientation. So I'm going to be starting off with the piston rings. As you can see, these are the rings that come with your Wiseco pistons. Um, the part number is 8700XX. 
and this is a complete set of rings. What it comes with is the uh, primary compression ring, the secondary uh, two oil rings, and also the expander ring. So as you can see uh, right here, this black ring right here, this is the secondary compression ring. And that silver one is the primary compression ring, or the top one. So um, if you look closely at the edges, you're going to see a little marking at one of the ends. And that just indicates that the uh, marking side is going to be facing up. So you're going to be putting this, uh, this side facing up. So it's going to be facing the top of the piston. Uh, same thing applies with the top, or the, sorry, the primary compression ring. And it's kind of hard to see here, but there's a little marking as well. So it's very important to um, orient those in the way that it's designed. So they, um, they're nice enough to mark it for you so you don't have to go through the trouble of looking at the, the bevel and determining which side faces up. So um, now uh, piston ring gaps. Uh, Weissco has a little table right here which tells you the ideal gap you'll need to set for your car. So I'm going off the clearance of a street moderate turbo slash nitrous setup. So the top ring is, um, so they have a little table here. What you want to do is find out your bore in inches and then multiply it by whatever that number is. So got a little piece of paper here. Our bore is 87 millimeters, which translates to around 3.425 inches. Now, 3.425 times this number right here, 0.005, would give me roughly 17 thousandths of an inch for the top compression ring. And for the second ring, uh, multiply 3.425 by 0 0.0055 gives me 18.83, which is roughly 19 thousandths of an inch. So just to give you an idea, um, 19 thousandths of an inch is very, very small. Should be a really slight gap. You can uh, use a feeler gauge to put it in between once the rings are in the cylinder, which I will be showing you in a second, to um, determine the gaps of the rings. Now, also, uh, this is how you're going to clock the piston rings when you're putting it when you're putting it over the pistons and putting the pistons into the cylinder. So, this is just how it's going to go. As you can see, top compression ring gap, second compression ring gap. You want them facing the kind of the opposite way, um, just so the gases won't just go through one gap and through the other one as well, so it'll have some sort of resistance. And then the oil rail top gap, oil rail bottom gap, and the oil expander ring gap. So they pretty much mark everything for you. Just want to be careful of the orientation before you compress the rings and put the piston into the cylinder. So now I'm going to be demonstrating how to gap the piston rings. Now to start off with, um, what you want to do is mark cylinders 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the box so you don't get them mixed up. Now the reason you want to do that is because um, when you gap a piston ring, you want to gap it in the cylinder that you're going to be using the ring in. So for example, if I'm using this uh, set of rings for piston number 4, I don't want to be checking the gap on piston number I mean a uh, cylinder number two or three because the clearance could be a little different from cylinder to cylinder. So I want to be using um, th these rings for cylinder number four only. Now I'm going to start off with the top compression ring which has a gap, a clearance gap requirement of as I previously calculated just a little over 17 thousandths of an inch. Now the first thing you want to do is uh, lightly lubricate the cylinder wall so that way you know the ring won't just scratch up the cylinder wall just a little thin film of oil and now you want to take your ring and you want to just put it inside so just like that and you want to push the ring down that way it's um, completely flat and level with the with the block so I have this tool right here which I designed and 3D printed myself. Um, if you want one, uh, just shoot me an email or message me on Instagram and I'll 3D print one for you. Just pay shipping or something. So now I have that ring pressed down. Um, I'm going to be checking the clearance 
with these feeler gauges. So this one right here is a 17 thousandths of an inch and this one right here is an 18 thousandths of an inch. So my uh, clearance requires to be a little over 17 thousandths and just under 18. So the 17 should slide in very easily with little resistance and the 18 should have a little bit of resistance and should just barely go in. So here's a 17. I'm going to be sliding it in. Just like that. So it slides in very easily with little resistance. However, with the 18 thousandths feeler gauge, um, it feels a little more resistance. So there's some, some drag on there. So that's how you um, set, the, set the ring gap. Now, if the ring gap is too small, here is how you're going to file it. So you are going to need this special tool. Um, in order to file down the rings so that the angle is not angle is not slanted or anything because you want the rings to be filed such that the um, the edges will be the edges will be flat when when they close up so let me try to get this in focus so this is what the tool looks like it costs around And it's, I think it's worth it. I mean, you can use sandpaper, but it's not going to come out, you know, as good as using this tool. So, how this works is pretty much you just take the tool, you press the piston ring up against the prongs, and then you press the ring against the abrasive material, and then just start grinding away. So you could go ahead and grind it, and it will take away material very slowly. So you can uh, just check the clearance. And make sure you don't grind away too much. Now, after you have the desired clearance, what you do is you just feel it with uh, your finger. Make sure there's no no burrs or anything. If there are burrs, just take some 600 grit sandpaper or something soft just to get rid of the burrs so you don't scratch up the cylinder wall. And then put it in there to recheck the clearance. And then after you check the clearance, make sure everything's good, you can go ahead and take the ring out and put it back in the box that it came out of. Now you're going to want to do the same thing with the secondary ring. However, I found that the secondary ring was already um, pretty, pretty wide, like the gap was pretty wide. So it's around 19,000th, which is what I was shooting for. So I didn't have to touch that at all. And after you do that to all four, then you are ready to go.